103 on my car all the way up from home here, so I don't know what it is, but it's hot. Uh, Brother Larry called me about a little 10 after 5. We were on our way here, and he was on his way to the nursing home. He's going to spend some time with Herb, uh, Herb and the family tonight. So he said he didn't know whether he would be here or not. It was going to depend on Herb's, con Herb's condition and just exactly what was going on. He said he may be in late. If not, don't worry about it. That's where he's at. So uh, the latest on Herb is, is that the nurse uh, called and, and said that he's, uh, his blood uh, oxygen was uh, 74. So he's going downhill real quick, and uh, she's giving him 24 to 48 hours. Could be sooner, could be longer. We just, you know, that's 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 kind of a range that she said gets it get the family ready, and uh, so uh, that's what they're trying to do. I uh, think we need to get the church ready because the obvious is probably going to take place here in the next day or two. So, so we're going to be looking to, looking at a funeral for. For brother Herb, but you know what? He's fine. He's ready. He's won the victory. Uh, he's just got to make the crossing. Everybody's a little nervous about it. We've never done it before, but we know he knows what's waiting. And uh, once he takes that last breath here and that first breath over there, he's going to be young and he's going to be healed. So we praise praise God for that. Amen. And uh, we just pray that he has a smooth crossing, doesn't uh, doesn't suffer. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's a great thing to be. I, I told the, the the class this morning started the new convert class, and I said, you know, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about. Whatever goes on, hey, we're gonna we're gonna win the win the victory. Thanks to uh, thanks to the Lord. So, anybody have any special prayer request tonight before we before we get started? I know we mentioned a whole bunch in the in the prayer room, and Lord, we pray that you would just you know help us. Brother Leon, would you lead us as we pray to open the service? Amen. Let's stand, Brother James. Lead us in some singing. I want to use the hymnal 440. Shelter in the time of storm. <laughs> the Lord's our rock, in him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. A shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no fears affright. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat. A shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. 
a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. All right, the next one will be number 566. <clears throat> There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one. No, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one. No, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Did ever saint find this friend forsake him? No, not one. No, not one. Or sinner find that he would not take him? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one. No, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. All right, and the last one, I think it was 668, right? 648. I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, when I die, hallelujah. 
you by and by. I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have gone, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy should never end I'll fly away I'll fly away oh glory I'll fly away when I die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away. You guys will come. We'll take up our evening offering. Brother Rick, would you pray? Amen. If I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Held on a little tighter Than what I'd give for one more day with you There's a wound here in my heart where something's missing and they tell me that it's gonna heal with time but I know you're in a place where all of your wounds have been erased and knowing yours are healed is healing mine the only scars in heaven they won't belong to me or you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down 
Is that the only scars in heaven Or on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walked was anything but easy You picked up your share of scars along the way But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is won The pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you There be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new and The thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in hell on the hands that hold you now. Oh, hallelujah. 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 For the hands that hold you now. There's not a day that goes by that I don't see. Live on in all the better parts of me Until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new The thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are the ones that hold you now The sky shall unfold Preparing his entrance The stars shall applaud Sweet light in his eyes shall, shall enhance those long waiting, and we shall behold him. This Yeah. 
love that song. The late, great Dottie Rambo wrote that, didn't you? You know what? It's going to be great when we see the face of Jesus. Amen. And somehow I think he's either going to meet us when we cross or sometime in heaven he's going to personally greet us into his kingdom. You know, it's going to be a great, great time. Herb's getting ready to experience that. But you know what? Lord's law to rapture us out of here before he's gone. <laughs> Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. I was going to preach on Mystery Babylon tonight, so I thought, well, I'll put that off till Wednesday night. So we'll see. <laughs> it depends on circumstances. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're living in a time whenever uh, the name of Jesus is not what it used to be. And what's Jesus mean to you? The title of the message, I guess, would be, But What Say You Then? 
What say you then? In Matthew 24, starting in verse 13, he says, And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He gave them the answer right there. And they said, Some, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But who say ye that I am? Who say ye that I am? Fathers, we come to you tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for your mercies. We're thankful, Lord, for your love. And we're thankful for each and every one that's came out tonight, Lord. We know it's a hot night. And Lord, we pray that you just bless each and every one. I believe with Brother Herb and the family, Lord, and Brother Larry as he sets with him. Lord, we don't know what your plan is. But you know, we know it's perfect, whatever it is. But be with us as we look into your word tonight. Everybody's going to have to answer the question, well, what are they going to do with Jesus? Who is he? Help us, Lord, tonight, we pray. Give me utterance, wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. What do you think of Jesus? Or who do you think he is? What do men say about him? He was asking them back then. You know, not a whole lot has changed in that regard between then and now. It's been 2,000 years. And in this 16th chapter, we find that Jesus and his disciples were, were traveling along. They were headed to the to, the, to Caesarea in Philippi. And as they was going along, Jesus just stopped, which he did quite a bit, and posed a question to them. He was good about that. He already knew the answer, but he wanted to see what they had. He wanted them to think their, their way through it. First, he wanted to know who everyone said he was. But he also wanted to know what this men that was with him thought of him. You know, we still today ask that same question. Who do people say Jesus is? Now, I, I, I got to thinking about that and, and uh, got, got, got to reading and it come across my mind that what if Jesus was alive today. What if what they went through 2,000 years ago didn't happen 2,000 years ago, it happens today? What if we were in that situation? What if Jesus says, who do men say that I am? Now, of course, back then, they, uh, we know that the, the religious leaders thought he was a blasphemer, the government thought he was a criminal. And I think if he was here today, some of the things that he would see and hear, first off, I think the FDA would get on to him for turning the water into wine without a license. The EPA would get on to him for killing fig trees. You know, when he come along and he was hungry and he went to the fig tree that had no figs and he cursed the tree and the tree died overnight? Well, they'd get on to him for that. The American Medical Association would get on to him for practicing medicine without a license. The Department of Health for asking him to open up a grave or raising the dead, or feeding the 5,000 in an unsanitary condition. Our government have something to say about it, wouldn't they? Oh. The NEA 
for teaching without a certificate. OSHA would get him for walking on water without a life jacket and unsafe boating practices. They were in a, them disciples were in trouble in a boat all the time. The SCPCA were driving hogs into the ocean and drowning them. The National Board of Psychiatry were giving advice on how to live a carefree life. The interfaith movement for condemning all other religions. You know, at, and last of all, the evangelicals would probably not be too mad at him, or might be, for driving a gas guzzler or an SUV. Yes, you think about that, it's kind of funny, but on the other hand, it's not funny, is it? It's exactly what they would do to him today. The disciples told Jesus that some people thought he was John the Baptist and others Elias, Jeremiah, or a prophet. In other words, he was a good man. He was a religious man. He was a good teacher. He done good deeds. But he was not the son of God. You know, we have religions that's doing exactly that same thing. The Muslims, the Muslims think that Jesus was great. He was one of the great prophets. He did good deeds. But he was not the son of God. Even the Mormons think the same thing, that he was a good teacher. He was a good man. But he was not the son of God. He was a son of God, not the God. They think we are sons of God. And in the scripture, it kind of leads towards that. But when do we become sons of God? When we get to heaven. He was the son of God here on earth. And that's the big problem with humanity today is they don't put Jesus in the right perspective of who he was. And you'd be surprised if people just think he was a good guy. Some think he was just a myth. Some a figment of somebody's imagination. And Darwin, or, or what was the, uh, the, uh, the, the big psychiatrist, he said, Christianity and Jesus was just a crutch for the weak. Well, I need that crutch, folks. Amen. Jesus is the Son of God. Not only was he a great historical figure, but he was exactly who he said he was. And I think he wants to ask us the question today, who do we think he is? I know there's a lot of people who claim to be Christians didn't put Jesus in the right. You know, we got, we've got people out there teaching that he's not the only way to get to heaven. Well, my Bible says that there's only one way, and that's in faith in Jesus Christ. People always have uh, and always will uh, be confused about who Jesus was. But I'm going to tell you what. And Revelation 1-7 is going to put a stop to that. Because one of these days, he says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye will see him, and also which precede him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. You know, everybody's going to see Jesus. I don't care who you are, whether they've been dead for years and years and years, or we go in the rapture whenever he comes, we are all going to see Jesus. We're going to stand before him in judgment. So we're going to know who Jesus is then. There's not going to be any question about it. 
people mock him, make fun. You know, our government today, <laughs> and it's not only our, our government, they do everything they can do to deny Jesus because he gets in the way. You know, he asked Peter in verse 16. But he turned around and said, Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter had the right answer, whether the rest of them did or not. He had the right answer. It is a blessing to know the right answer. Well, who's got the right answer? People knows him personally has the right answer. If you know Jesus, there's no doubt who he is. He's the son of the living God. And he is our savior. He's the one who came and died on the cross for our sins. He was the one that was dead, died, was buried, and resurrected on the third day. There's some people who doubt the resurrection, but I'm going to tell you what, without the resurrection, it's all mute. That's how he gave us our salvation. It's through his blood. He had the right answer. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar John. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you, to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The Holy Spirit of God revealed it to him. He got it right. You know, he is, uh, Peter was, this, of course, this was his name changed. It was Simon before changed to Peter. And why did he change his name to Peter? Because the word Peter means rock. Petros, little rock. And John 1, 40, 42 says, which is interpreted a stone. Not much harder than a rock, is there? Sometimes the rocks are unmovable. Peter was unmovable. The rock. He was tough. Big enough for a foundation. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is in Jesus. Now, he goes on to say, and a lot of people take this out of context and, 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 and get, it, get it wrong. It says, I say unto thee that thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates from hell shall not prevail against it. A lot of people think that the church was built on Peter. The church was not built on Peter. He used Peter to build the church. But the church is built on Jesus Christ. Amen. The firm foundation. He gave Peter a couple of jobs. The church is built on Jesus. The church is built by Jesus. He uses each and every one of us to help build his church. What are we doing here? We're preaching the gospel. Preaching Jesus. Preaching him crucified trying to get people saved and ready to know who Jesus is. You know, we started that new convert class this morning, and we already had some pretty good questions. And, you know, that's the, we answer those questions. And I, I challenged them. I said, look, I don't care how long you've been coming to church. You need to come to Sunday school. That's where you get your questions answered. He can't hardly stand up in church and, hey, I got a question. Larry would answer it. I'd answer it. But the place to do that is in Sunday school Amen. where we learn. That's the importance of it. 
And if you don't know, go to, go to somebody and ask. Jesus just gave to Peter, he says, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He gave him, he called him the keys. What is the keys? He, 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 give, he give Peter a job. He used these twice in his ministry. He used them on the day of Pentecost. He used the gifts of the Holy Spirit to reveal to the people the Holy Spirit and to start the church. That was the first time he used them, one of the keys. The other one was with Cornelius, the family of Cornelius, when he preached to them and they got saved and they experienced the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those were the two times. Anybody tells you that they took Peter to Rome and made him the first pope, they're not telling you the truth. It didn't happen. That did not happen. There's no record of that. So, Peter had a job to do. Number one was to carry the gospel to the Gentiles. And number one, or first off, to carry it to the Jews first. And they refused. Most of them did. And then he carried it to the Gentiles, to the family of Cornelius. And praise the Lord that he did, that you and I was offered the gift of salvation. The church was not built on Peter. Even though Peter had the right to answer his offenses. Well, look what, look what he, look at he, why, why did, why could he, he couldn't build the, the church on Peter. Peter was just a man. The church is built on the testimony of Jesus Christ and him dying for our sins. But he said, then charge his disciples, then he charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was the Christ. He wanted them to figure this out on his own. For them, for, for that at that time, before being Jesus showed himself unto his disciples and how that he must go to Jerusalem, he began to teach them and suffer many things of the elders, of the chief priests, and of the scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. He began to teach them this, to prepare them. Then old Peter took him, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not happen unto thee. Jesus turned and said unto him, Get thee hence behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those things that be of men. Peter wasn't thinking about anything but himself. You know, we got a lot of people out there thinking about themselves and not the church and not about and not about, about Jesus. So Peter, who he was, and as great a man as he was and what he did in the church, Jesus said, You're an offense to me. Now how can you build a church? That's why you can't build a church on man. There's nothing there. You're an offense to God. At your best, you're still an offense. He says, our righteousness is like filthy rags in his presence. But he used Peter to carry his gospel, not only to the Jews, but the Gentiles, and begin to build the church. Peter didn't really believe that what Jesus was saying was going to happen. And that's why we see God could not build a church on him. So what happened to those who believe? Look at verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in glory, in his glory, of his Father, with his angels. Then if she shall reward every man 
according to his works. Larry preached a great message this morning, trying to get you to realize that, hey, we have a promise. We're not going to have to go through the tribulation. He said, I, he said I, I, I'm going to relieve you of that hour. You're not going to have to do it. But with the promise that we have is for those who believe, he's coming. And our reward for putting our trace, trust and faith in him is wonderful time in heaven. To spend it with eternity with Jesus. That's our blessed hope, and to escape a terrible hell. There is a heaven, and there is a hell. You have your choice. So how do you get to heaven? Peter's confession in verse 16. That's a good start. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You got to believe he's the son of God. But he also told us in the next verse, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man come in his kingdom. I, uh, he was actually talking, talking about John. Uh, and later on, he, he, he bears that out when he's asked the question, well, what about John? Because he told the others they were all going to die for his... John was the only one that died of old age. Uh, I, I think I just told you this not too awful long ago. But he did get to see the things of the future in the book of Revelation. That's what Revelation is all about. What's to come? John got to see him. But he also said to us in verse 24, So then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That's how we get to heaven. We take up the cross. We lay down our sin. Put our trust and our faith in him. Deny ourselves. That's how we get to heaven. Through our trust and faith in him. He says, follow me. If we try for eternal life with God, we can only lose this world. But if you keep this world, you're going to lose your relationship with Jesus Christ. You can't have both. You either accept him or you deny him. The problem is we got today is we got too many people who don't want to give up their world. We got too many preachers that don't want to give up their world. We got too many politicians that don't want to give up their world. You know, there's a lot of things are going on and he says, what, what, what profit is the world? Our reward is in heaven. And the only way you, is, is to give up the world. And it's strange to me that we have people running around claiming to be a Christian. But they rarely... And it, it, tickles, it tickles me uh, every Easter, Passover, or Good Friday, they're all running around with ashes on their forehead, and then they'll run to Capitol Hill and vote to kill babies. You know, it's a sad situation. They have left out the name of Jesus. They've taken it out of school. They've taken it out of the home. They've taken it out of government. They've taken it out of our law. And what a mess have we got today. 
There's only one who can cure this problem, folks. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Have you failed to deny yourself? Have you carried your cross? Are you following Jesus? That's the question. Who is Jesus to you? Is he just a man? Is he a myth? A legend? Or is he your savior? Put your trust and your faith in him. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you would just help us tonight. Lord, Lord, we love your word and what you've said. Lord, we need to put you first in our life. We need to give up the world and accept you as Savior. Help us, Lord, to draw closer to you each and every day. Without you, we are lost and bound for a devil's hell. But with you, we're headed to glory. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. There's one here tonight that needs to talk to you, Lord. We pray that you would just help them, Lord, to come and get things right. Put you in the right perspective. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand, have a, just a verse of invitation. If you have a need, you just want to talk to the Lord. The altar is, is open tonight. Just as I am. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your attention. Uh, you're going to have to put up with me again Wednesday night. Uh, pray for Brother Herb's family. Uh, just comfort them and uh, prepare their hearts. They know where he's going. But it doesn't make any difference. It's still, they're going to they're gonna miss A lot of people are going to miss him. The church is going to miss him. Pray for the church. That uh, put our trust and our faith in him Wednesday night 7 o'clock I don't know of anything else sing her song because he 